Hello everybody and welcome to this walkthrough with me, Gold Clash Tommy and my dear friend, it's RJ TV. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome everybody. We're going to go through the text guides. Uh, we didn't do it the last tournament uh, because of lack of time. It's hard to keep it up with the time zones. So uh, I'm happy uh, to see all the comments afterwards. So if you do have any questions about the text guides or like the things that we are saying, please make a comment in the comment section below and we will be happy to answer you. So I think it's time to uh, get started. So first of all, welcome RJ. Uh, thank you. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. My question is, how are you doing? You've been sick lately. I hope you're feeling a lot better. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Fe I'm feeling better. You know, it's. Um, it has been a rough two weeks, uh, and uh, I. I had. I was. Yeah, I was in bed basically the whole last weekend, and uh, basically since. Yeah. Oh, it's a long time at least. So I haven't been streaming for a while. Haven't been uploading that many videos as. <coughs> as you can hear, I'm coughing like crazy. But uh, we're going to. Uh, yeah, work that through. I'm at least uh, alive, you know. You're you're on the upswing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, okay, <clears throat> we do have the Earth Day tournament that is coming up. It's coming up with start tomorrow, Monday, 16th of April, and uh, we're going to play the courses on the Gokasha Bay. No new holes, but it will be new holes for some people that may not have been playing Tour 8 before. So, I think it's time to get started with hole number one. It's a par four and. As always, how do you play this one, RJ? Well, for the rookies, uh, there's, as you can see on, on the screen here, we have two different ways to play it. Me personally, I like to play it where the black box is, the first black line. Um, that just, you, you put full top spin on and full right curl. If you have a club that'll do a lot of curl. If not, be careful with that top spin because you could end up in the rough. Um, and, and that sets you up nice for a second shot onto the green. However, if you're a little bit worried about your accuracy, I would follow the white line, and I believe a wood with some top spin, maybe a big dog, would be able to get you to bounce over that second sand trap and right onto the green. What do you think, Tommy? <laughs> I can just agree. It's like the black line is the, a little bit more aggressive, and I remember from the last tournament we did have a lot of tailwind. And which meant that we actually could go over the bunker on the right. But the normal way, I would say, in my book, especially if you're playing from the second or the third tee, is to go with the white line if we're not having tailwind. Otherwise, you will have to overpower your shot and try to bounce it there on the narrow fairway, which is very, very tough. So, if you go with the white line, uh, then you can choose a club with uh, some distance. Uh, to give yourself an easier task to go to the green, especially if you're going to have some headwind. Otherwise, the sniper will work very well. So, there we go. Hole number two, a par five. Uh, how do we play this one? Welcome to one of the most boring holes. <laughs> this one you play very, very straightforward. The only thing that you really have to worry about is how skinny that fairway is. And also, be careful with your top spin, though, so you don't end up rolling into the rough. I like right where you got your black box there for your first shot for the rookies. Your second shot, I also believe that you should lay up just a little bit there, setting you up for a possible uh, chip in. However, I just want to throw one more thing in. You'll notice that the second fairway kind of bulges out there just below that black box. You can set up with a whole bunch of backspin your shot right there, and you'll see that the fairway next to the green juts out. That gives you a more straight shot on the hole. However, you will probably be using a little bit longer club than if you were to go all the way up. Either way is great. Yes, that was some good addition. <clears throat> it really was. Uh, and I would say, like, playing this one from the third tee or from the second tee, it basically plays the same. It's, uh, again, it's a... It's a boring par five. The only way this one could be a little bit funny if it we we would get a lot of tailwind that we get uh, that we did get in the last tournament. Then we could go with all our power that we did have to go into the rough and reach even with a rough iron with like 16 miles per hour wind. And I'm talking from the 30 now, but in general you play yourself up and um, take it easy, and then you actually have a good opportunity to to ship it in for an eagle otherwise be happy with a birdie 
if we're not getting Tailwind, be happy with a birdie. So that I would be at least. So <coughs> I say get in the hole for hole number three, part three. I have aced this one many times. How do you feel about this one, RJ? You know, for the rookies, I it's it's plain and simple. You don't even see a white line on this particular hole because you you just aim and shoot. Put some backspin on that ball and make sure that uh, you know if you have a good ball guide. You line it up to the hole, put probably about maybe two or three backspin on it, depending on the length of your club, and uh, and you ship it in for an ace. <laughs> exactly. I really like this one, and I play this one from the second tee always with the Guardian. And that is because I do like to use a lot of topspin, eh, sorry, backspin. And that goes the same for the third tee. Uh, I remember myself making an ace, a lucky ace with a, uh, with a rocket on this one. So rocket is a really good club to use. <laughs> if you're playing on the 30 uh, because especially if you have it maxed out because the backspin will help you to make it stop close to the pin and it also gives you a really really great opportunity to make a hole in one and I do believe we will see many hole in ones especially from the first tee uh, on this hole in the tournament so okay we have this kind of crazy hole uh, par hole 4 par 4 how do we play this one? Can we go directly to green, maybe? Uh, you know, honestly, I'll leave that one to you. For us uh, rookies, I would say let's play it safe and go right where that first uh, black box is. Kind of lay up a little bit, maybe again, if you got like a, a lot of wind coming at your back. Just be very careful not to land in the rough, because unless you got a Nirvana, I don't think you're going to be able to, to get very close for your uh, second approach side. So just take your time lining this ball up. Make sure you got that ball under some good control. Uh, and, and then your second shot, you know, a little bit of top spin if, uh, if you're going to bounce it before so you could hop over the rough. If not, use a club with some backspin so you can slow it down as you, uh, you know, and stay on the green for your second shot. Maybe you'll get lucky and even plunk it in there. Yeah, uh, this is a par 4. Uh, what, what can I say? I would say this is one of the most boring par 4s that we do have in the game. Maybe that's a hard statement in in this case, but in the end, if we're not having Tailwind, even though with Tailwind, this one will be very, very tough to do anything else than just lying ourselves up for a uh, wood shot. And we follow the black line all the way through, and on 2nd tee and 3rd tee as well. If we do have Tailwind, a lot of Tailwind, then we could try out a trick shot. Uh, and But I'm not even sure that that would work either. Maybe uh, we could put ourselves close to the green, etc. But, you know, play it safe. Stay away from the freaking bunker. Uh, because that will uh, make it hard to get that eagle or at least that birdie. So, <coughs> oh my god, now we got the new sub. And that was really, really loud. Uh, I'm gonna take that away. Oh my god, that was really, really loud. Thank you for subbing, by the way. But okay, then. Uh, hole five. Uh, this is one by me, one of the toughest part threes, I think. Uh, what do you think about this one, RJ? Uh, for this particular hole, for the rookies, I like to keep things straightforward. So I actually like the white line, and you know, I'm more of a less aggressive guy. But bring something with a lot of backspin, like a Saturn or something. We got a lot of green here. Put some full backspin on that. Just be very careful that the ball doesn't hit too much backspin or you'd aim a little too close. Because I have seen people roll into the bunkers, actually rolling backwards or rolling away from the hole. You want to make sure you stick it right by the hole. Maybe you'll get lucky and get the ace. If not, you want a nice, easy chip or putt. Yeah, correct. For me, this is a birdie hole. I will be very happy to make a birdie. I <coughs> weren't even close on this one when I played it in the tournament. And it's like you can see the black line. The reason the black line is there on the side of the bunker is that the bunker actually slopes down. So you can use the fairway there to bounce it up straight to the pin. But it depends so much on what type of wind you have uh, in what way you're going to play it. I remember, especially from the 30, you bounce it before the bunker over the bunker to try to roll it in for an ace but again you are so depending on how the first bounce will go and as you said RJ it's like people have been going back with using too much backspin because they just hit it slightly off because if we shake if we take the fairway just on top of the first bunker it it is uphill after that but the fringe 
is flat. So if you hit it on the fringe, <coughs> no problem. If you just hit it slightly before, you will go short and have a really crazy bounce. So this is a very technical hole. So in general, take the birdie. Uh, I was hey, I was going to say make love to the birdie. That would be very very <laughs> wrong. But uh, take the birdie, be happy with it, and then go through to hole number six. So par five and. Uh, this is one of my favorite holes, I would say. But what's your thoughts about this one? Uh, this one uh, will probably be a little bit more lengthy uh, explaining because I, I feel I got to explain it twice. I got to explain the white line and I got to explain the black line. I'll do it as quickly as possible. The black line is definitely the way most people are going to want to take it. And it's straightforward. Your target will generally stretch right to where about that... Uh, that first black box is, and then it could roll to approximately where the second black box is, setting you up for actually a little different shot uh, I take. I like to go from that second black box and bounce it right around where your white line ends with a lot of curl, and it ends up on the green for me a lot of times. However, some people in rookie are not going to have the clubs available to do that. In that case, I say you take the safe route, which is the white line. No explanation needed beyond that because I'm explaining it twice for one hole. Just play it safe and, and get it on in the hole uh, following the white path. Yeah, and I say uh, for many people, uh, if we're talking people playing from the second tee or the third tee or... <clears throat> really considering this one to be an albatross hole. The reason for that is that we have a big patch of rough uh, just near the green. It may look like we're having a lot of water or a really tough time, but we actually have a whole ring basically to set up as at least a yellow ring to set up there in the rough. So you bounce it over, then you use the rough with two two bars of backspin with your wood club and one and a half bar of topspin with your long iron depending on how far you reach for your drive. If you don't feel comfortable by doing that and go with that aggressive light, then you of course play it safe. And then you uh, then you try to just bounce it over to the green and make an easy eagle. But if you do feel comfortable with the way you're, you are adjusting, go for it. Give yourself an opportunity to actually do an albatross, and I, this one is uh, definitely a hole where we will see people making albatrosses on. But it's not easy to make an albatross, I'm not going to say that, but <coughs> it's worth to take a risk in summer case, especially with sidewind. So, uh, now we come to a part three, where we will see people bouncing all over the place. Uh, so what's your uh, thoughts, Ardi, about hole seven? This is a very deceiving hole. Um, I think the black line is definitely my favorite approach. I recommend using a club with the best ball guide. You heard me right, the best ball guide. If you line your shot up down by that black box, that is the flattest part. I don't put any backspin on or top spin, and normally the ball... Like, for example, I have a Sniper 9, which I know most rookies don't. But whatever your ball guide is for this particular shot, line it up as close as you can to the pin. Take your shot and and be happy with a birdie. This is a tough par 3. Definitely a tough par 3. And you rely. And the reason it's so tough is that you actually rely on the bounces. Because you will bounce... If you bounce uh, according to the black line, you will bounce twice before you even reach the green. <coughs> and uh, and that's why you can see different lines here on the screen. And that is not to try to make it harder for you to decide. But me, myself, I've been debating with myself, especially through the last tournament we played this hole. How am I going to play it? Because I... On par threes, I rather want to take a safe route to stay away from so many as many obstacles as possible. And I find myself, especially from the second tee and from the third tee, to use a lot of backspin on my wood club or on my driver if I'm playing from the third tee and going according to the white line. But <coughs> I've been having more luck getting hole in ones going according to the black line. But the reason I'm debating with myself is that we are having two bounces with a black line to go to the green, which can put us in a very 
tough spot going into the bunkers something like that using a lot of backspin going in between the bunkers basically remove the bunkers from play but you have a very irregular first bounce so this is again this is a very tough part three be happy with the birdie and i would say there is no wrong way to play this hole so if play it black line yellow line white line play it in a way you feel comfortable at, to at least give yourself the birdie to move through Two more holes to go, and we're going to go with hole number eight, where, and um, this one is kind of interesting, but how do you play this one, then, RJ? You know, I got to remember, I'm talking to rookies, <laughs> so uh, the way I take and the way a rookie should take could be two different things. I like, I like the black line myself. That's the way I normally play it, but you do have yourself in a little bit of danger if you have lower clubs in the rookie to where if you land in the in the rough, you may not be able to make it. Um, you know, to the green or, or not the rough, I'm sorry, the uh, sand and you land in the water and, and, you know, you're, you're pretty much begging your opponent to get an albatross. So for most rookies with low level clubs, I say, play it safe, take the white line. You can get there in two and have an easy putt. Maybe you'll get lucky and actually chip it in. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a hole that I would say we have been, I think I've been playing this one Probably most times of all the holes, almost it's a it's a hole where the wind depends it depends depends a lot, of course, on how you are going to play this hole. So I would say the black line most of the times for me goes with if you are having tailwind, uh, because then you take the water out of play with headwind or sidewind. Then I think it's too risky to ha try to overpower, go short into the bunker. Or maybe even go into the water, which would be devastating. Um, if you're going to play according to the white line, have in mind that the second shot is affected a little bit more by the wind as we are playing uphill. So if you're having 10 miles per hour in wind, adjust as you would be having 12 or 13 to be more accurate to get that one to, uh, to the, uh, the eagle. The green is uphill, which means that if you're having headwind, for example, or sideways, maybe apply half a bar of topspin or reduce one bar of sides uh, or backspin to get it to roll up to the pin because I find myself so many times going short in this one. Okay, we have the last hole here. We have a part, we have a hole nine which have, has a very interesting layout. I don't know if you have thought about that, RJ, in how it's designed, but I think it's kind of hilarious. Um, and I may be a, a little bit childish for thinking like that. But how do you play this one? Uh, this is <clears throat> the first time I've seen this. Now, wait a minute. Uh, are we... I, I'm pretty sure I always hit from the white line. So, but I'm playing in pro. So is it is the black line rookie? Correct. The rookie plays from the right side. A pro and expert plays from the left side. That This is the first hole we actually have had different tee locations uh, so that is absolutely correct so rookies play from the uh, from the right side which will have more of a straight line to the pin uh, and uh, what can i say it's just to stay away from just and just but it is to stay away from the bunker in the middle and the rough then it shouldn't be a problem at all to go directly to the green so uh, then I think it's better for you to explain how you play it, RJ. As you're playing in pro, you're playing from the left side. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, I guess to uh, switch up a little bit here and tell you how I play it in pro, <laughs> uh, I, I really like that white line. You know, you, uh, you can play it safe uh, and, you know, just basically the ball will end up right where the black line is without, you know, much curl and don't put too much top spin on because, or don't, you could easily end up in the, in the rough or the sand. Uh, but then your second shot, you know, assuming that you stay on, should be right there to the pin. Uh, line it up, and um, I don't want to say that you'll you'll chip it in from that distance, but it's it's a pretty straightforward you know hole from that standpoint. I know a lot of people go a lot more aggressive than I do. They'll put top spin and full curl on me. My wood will easily make it to uh, you know to the green, so 
I just go, I lay up a little bit. I don't want to say lay up, but I don't put full top spin on to protect myself from going into the rough and sand to ensure an easy shot on the onto the putting green. And that is smart. We should never put ourselves in a situation where we risk losing the eagle because we're going too aggressive. Of course, we're going to go aggressive at some point, but <coughs> at this fairway is very bumpy. And the green is very bumpy, which is, again, with these type of holes, you need to be a little bit lucky uh, when you do uh, go for a distance shot or even for a short range ship to this hole. So, and I'm just going to add, uh, when it comes to the 30, playing in Masters, we played this one with a massive tailwind the last time, which gave us the opportunity to try to hook it onto the green, which was... It was, it was possible uh, to get it very, very close. And uh, if we tailwind, then go full blast. It's better to take away all the obstacles directly. But that doesn't apply on the other levels. So it's very important to put yourself on the fairway, uh, in my opinion. So, okay, my friends. This was the walkthrough uh, by me and my dear friend RJ. TV. I know your name is not TV in the in a third name, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, everybody knows who you are. And I would say <clears throat> here you can see the club guides as well. In the end, there are a lot of tutorials and guides here on the channel, and uh, we will both be streaming this tournament. Hopefully, I will be able to make it all the rounds this time, as I didn't stream my last weekend round in Masters due to I was very sick and down with a fever. So. Uh, but here in the end, I would like to uh, put the word over to you, RJ. If they don't know who you are uh, and where they can find you, uh, can you please explain to them how they can find you here on YouTube? They call me Chip. Yeah. <laughs> and you can find out why by going to, just typing in, it's RJ TV on YouTube and on Facebook, and I'm very easy to find. That. That's why I made such an easy name. It's RJTV, all one word, no apostrophes. That is awesome. So give him a sub, my friends, and don't forget to hit sub here on the channel as well. And uh, we will get back to you through the weeks uh, with stream, so stay tuned. And in the end here, we would like to uh, end as always as we do together. So, um, yeah, I put the, how do we end this, RJ? You will have to end this this time. Happy stroking. Happy stroking, everybody.